In this video, I'm going to share with you a few of the techniques that I use to keep control of my email. The most interesting for most people, and certainly a technique I find very helpful after I come out from deep work and on a big project, is how I process over a thousand emails in under an hour. I'll also share with you when I do this, since keeping it in box zero isn't actually a priority for me, but being in control of my email is. I'm going to be using and showing you how I apply these techniques in the email program which I use, which is Apple Mail. It's possible to do these in other programs like Outlook and other things, but just a little bit less elegantly, and that's why I'm going to stick with Apple Mail for now. There are some other super productivity email programs like MailMate, which I've also used in the past, and think that those are a really good fit for some as well. Before we dive into the specific techniques, let's just talk a little bit about Inbox Zero. It certainly feels great. You've got it all off your plate, and you're ready to get into the rest of your workday. Many people start their day by trying to get to the state in their email. But it's a never-ending task, right? Once you've done it, then pretty soon something new is coming through. For me, I feel being in control of my email matters more than Inbox Zero. There is a version of Inbox Zero that I do do, and that's in VIP email. People who have identified as really important, I do make sure that I try to respond to each one of their comments before I shut down for the day, even if it's just a quick message. If you've got a process by which you get to inbox zero, great, more power to you. Instead, I take an approach where I differentiate between when I'm processing my email and scanning email. We'll talk a little bit more about those techniques shortly. We're going to pause here briefly before I talk about the techniques that let me do this kind of scanning versus processing approach and why I feel in control even when it's not at inbox zero. And that first one is differentiating between people who have permission to interrupt you and people for whom you're going to do quick responses and then all the rest. Right now, the structure of most email programs is such that messages all come in with the same priority. There's some systems like hey.com that try to help you automatically differentiate that, and there are some new things in like Outlook where they differentiate between focused and other emails. There are some simple smart filters you can use to set that up for yourself if you want, but for myself, I take a much more active approach to this since this really matters to me, and that's using this VIP feature. I choose to identify people in Apple Mail as VIP, and that's the only group that, one, I give them permission to interrupt me when I have my email notifications on, which is only a few times during the day, and then two, that's the group that I look through to make sure that I've given them a response within a 24-hour period. The rest all fall within these other buckets, which I tend to process only on a weekly or a monthly basis. So let me show you how to do that inside Apple Mail. Here in my email program, you can see that I've just gotten an email from someone who's actually really important to me. Here's a test email from myself. What you do is you just select that person's name and then you select to add them to VIP. Once they're added as VIP, you can then allow those notifications to be the only ones which show up in your email notification system. So you can continue to have conversations when you're doing your email batch processing. And you also get this magical folder inside Apple Mail called the VIP email. And now those are gonna appear here. I go through these just before my shutdown ritual in the day to make sure that I've sent responses to each of the people in my VIP email list. So that's step one. Using this feature, you can greatly reduce the worry that you have that you're not responding to important people in your work or your personal life. The next big technique is when to check your email. So once you've created this VIP channel, the next important lesson is to batch your email processing. If you leave your email notifications on all the time, it results in very shallow work, and you're much less efficient at responding to those. So I tend to do this only twice a day. I do it at around 11, 11.30, if I've not had an extended deep work session. Otherwise, I do it first thing after I'm back from lunch and I've got a good solid hour blocked off so that I can be collaborative and be responding. I also have a short period at the end of the day, just before my shutdown ritual, where I quickly scan through my VIP email so that I can get a quick response to those who really matter to me. Other than that, much of the day spent looking things up or others are gone. If I'm going to be working on a project with people, I tend to use other tools and specific hours that I've got availability to help move them forward, whether I'm managing them or I'm participating as a team member. These are things like Slack or Basecamp. Personally, we use Basecamp and we use the Campfire feature with clear expectations when we're each going to be on versus doing deep work. And of course, we also use in-person work so we can collaboratively work together, which can be very rich as you're trying to work together to either solve an important problem through pairing or to push to get something done. The next technique is to not touch email that you don't have to. And this is really dealing with spam. Personally, I use the spam sieve system that lets me quickly and easily train it, and it's been very helpful at eliminating thousands of emails every week. There are lots of other tools and techniques that you can use out there, including ones that are much more assertive, like SaneBox. I found that the Apple junk mail processing just wasn't as good as it was with spam sieve, which uses some different techniques 
that I found much more effective. A small sub note, just if you have multiple accounts. I like to have multiple accounts because it gives me these specific channels that make it much easier for me to go through things when I'm in a specific mode. For example, I'm actively involved in scouts with my children and I have a special scouts email that lets me sort of scan through those. For some of the different positions I'm in, I also have different email accounts for those and it helps me work much more effectively in those specific contexts where I tend to batch the work that I'm doing for each of those as well. There are two specific modes of dealing with email that I want you to be aware of and we're going to talk about them explicitly. And one is called scanning and the other one is processing. When I'm doing my batch email, I'm doing batch processing, which is in general, I'm trying to sort of get through things and I use these filters that I'll be showing you shortly that help me process things pretty quickly and stay near inbox zero for much of the week. As I said, that's not so important when I'm doing a lot of deep work where I tend to not do a lot of processing and instead just do scanning. So what's the difference? Well, I think it's very clear when you're checking email on your phone is in general, you're scanning it. You're going through it quickly, identifying just what's important to you, doing quick responses to that, right? And then just ignoring the rest for now. That's scanning mode. Processing mode is when you're sitting there with your full email client and you're busy going through and your goal is to sort of make sure that you're getting through all the emails that you've, you've gotten. When I'm in a really intense project and I'm doing a lot of deep work related to it, I tend to stay fully in scanning mode for one to two weeks and then only deal with it afterwards in a large processing chunk, which is what the techniques I'm going to show you help me do. When I'm in between a lot of deep work, then I tend to do a little bit more processing each day and that keeps me near inbox zero for much of the week, which is also really nice. So what's scanning mode like? So in scanning mode, you're just sort of glancing through your inbox and you're identifying just the emails that you want to click on to read a little bit more about and perhaps do a quick response to. There might be some things like complicated or ambiguous emails that you may choose not to immediately respond to. We'll talk about some specific techniques with dealing with those, but you're sort of leaving them aside. Then in processing, you've got a little bit more time. I tend to have at least a 25 minute chunk when I'm doing email processing so I can get a lot of it done in a batch. Emails as tasks, we'll talk a little bit about afterwards because there's some that you just can't do in a quick amount of time. But there's a way to sort of move them into another space where you can look and work at them later. And then I tend to sort of clear that page and move on to the next one. So now let's talk about processing superpowers. And this is really the one that's going to give you the technique that will let you process like the thousand emails that you get to when you return from holiday or sometimes the, the emails that have accumulated while you've been doing deep work on important projects for you. And the key step here is knowing how to process quickly and then using filters to effectively identify emails for which you don't need to pay a lot of attention to and subsequently getting more and more emails that you can pay much more attention to. As we talked about earlier, using VIP email is really important. And I tend to start there, going through my VIP email first. In this view, I go and quickly sort by from, which I found more helpful than sorting by date when I'm doing this processing. So let me show you that here. When you click on your VIP list, you'll see a view that's often sorted by date by default. This is really good when you're checking in during the day, but when you're looking to process it, I quickly go and say sort by from. This is really helpful because you'll notice that for many people, they've pinged you about things as their thinking has evolved and you just need to send one email back for the five that they may have sent you. So once you've processed that, now I recommend we use the smart folder feature to identify emails that are much older, that we can scan through very quickly, then more recent and then to the most recent ones. And we'll use the same technique of sorting these by from dates because I have found those to be most helpful in terms of understanding the context of a bunch of those so you can quickly scan through them. So let me show you how to do this. There's a default smart mailbox, which is for today. We're going to go and set up one for 30 days and older, seven days and older, one day and older. So we go through and say new smart mailbox and we're going to do 30 days and older. And you're going to choose date received and it's not in the last, I'm going to choose one month. And I'm going to add in one other feature, which is that where it's coming from. So I'm going to look for where message is in mailbox. And I'm just going to choose all inboxes. So that's the key step. We'll see how easy it is to create the follow on ones. So now you'll click OK. And then we're going to use the same technique where I go in the view, sort by, and instead of date, I'm going to use from. This is going to let you much more effectively scan things from here. In order to create the other filters, you just quickly click on it, just so you're not editing the text, and you just say duplicate smart mailbox. And here I'm going to just go and change it to seven days and older. And here we're going to do not in the last seven days. Okay, and then the final one, 
we're gonna do I'm gonna do one day and older. One loss, one day. So now you've got these three, and I process them in backwards order. So I go through the 30 days and older. These are emails that if you've missed them, in general, the person's already reached out to you to follow through. In my reviews, it's generally going to be somewhere between 5 and 20 emails out of the three to 500 that you've got in this box that you need to do. A key technique here is don't touch it if you don't have to. So you're sorting by from and you're scanning through the list, right? And you're only clicking on things from someone that you might have missed and then choosing to respond to that specifically and quickly. If it's been an ambiguous email or one of these other hard to respond to emails that you'd meant to get through, it's time then just to quickly respond. And often the most appropriate thing is to say, I'm sorry, you know, I didn't get to this. Can we meet to discuss it so that I can be clear about what it is that you need me to do? That's a very effective technique for processing those. For the rest of it, you're going to just go through the entire list and then you're going to use keyboard shortcuts. Keyboards can be far more effective than mousing around, which can take you a few seconds. And here we're going to use a few keyboard shortcuts to just help select everything and then archive it. So Command A will select all of the messages in, the, in this view that you have, which could be 500. And then you're just going to archive all of these. The keyboard shortcut for that is Command Control A. So after processing all of these in 30 days and older, you're now going to have eliminated a lot of the emails that had accumulated that were old. Then you're going to process the seven days and older. This one will require a little bit more attention and you might have a slightly higher threshold of those things that you'd not get responded to, but it meant to, which you can quickly do so now. And then you finally get down to the one day and older where you'll have a few that you'll go through and quickly sort of respond to or transition into tasks. And then you're close to your inbox zero. So when do I tend to do this? I must confess after projects, it's really nice before my wrap time, that's the weekly reflection and planning hour that I do to, to create a really great week um, in the next week. I tend to then allocate an hour just before that to let me go through all of this. That lets me make sure that on my, my next and later lists, I've got any of the email tasks that might have accumulated there and I've given people a response or blocked out time to make sure that I talk to others. If you're gonna be doing this more regularly, then I'm not sure that Friday is necessarily the best time for it. And in those days, I would suggest that you not do it on Monday because on Monday you're going to sort of really want to kickstart with some strong deep work on your most important priorities. But instead I consider doing this as a special sort of Tuesday after lunch collaborative time with a little bit of an extra hour to help me get back to inbox zero, which then lets you enjoy sort of a, a week where it's really easy to process your emails. There's some really important gotchas that you should be aware of. I think this technique is going to work for everybody, eliminating one third to two thirds of their emails, which in truth they probably don't need to respond to. But if you're not aware of some of these other techniques, those last you know, 10% to a third of emails can suck up an inordinate amount of time. What are those techniques? So the techniques are how do you deal with tasks in email? You're sometimes given a document to review that may take you one to three hours. How would you deal with that? Most people deal with that by using what I call the death star. That is, they star the email because they need to get to it, but it's not in their tasking system. They don't have an easy way to prioritize it. And then they're going to be soon ending up with a hundred to a thousand starred tasks in this sort of dead zone of things that they don't like to look at because there's so much to do there. Instead, I think there are techniques where you can quickly turn emails into tasks that we can talk about in a later video. The other big one is recognizing when there are ambiguous emails that are sent to you. These are most easy for me to recognize when I think that I need to send back a couple of paragraph responses. In general, I'm trying to use the technique that I learned in World Without Email, where I'm trying to respond with only one or two sentences in most emails. And if it's going to take more than that, then instead I'm asking the person say, hey, can we just discuss this? Um, which can often be much more fast and effective and lets you sort of block out that time. The other powerful techniques, which we've got some other videos related to, are, are how to say no well. And then I think this Tim Ferriss view of doing unimportant things badly um, can also be very useful here because sometimes people are asking you to do things without giving you an awareness of how important it is to them right? Or what is on your plate right now and how to prioritize those. If that happens to be your boss who has this particular style, I think the most helpful things there are to collect all their emails in a batch, have a clear identification of like what you're doing the week, and then just get some time with them once a day or once a week to say, hey, you're sending me a lot of these things. Can you just help me prioritize it based on what I have to do as well? Often you're going to pitch that less about them helping you and more that you would say, I want to make sure that I do the most important things for you and I can clearly identify those. Do you mind just sitting with me and helping me make sure I prioritize these correctly? All right. 
So I hope this helps you get control of email again and then stay in control even as you go off to do deep work away from this where you can use the superpower of your brain in order to solve really important problems. I wish you all the best. Go out and do some great work and find flow. Bye.